Hey everybody, I wanted to talk a little bit about perspective and text in Photoshop. Again, inspired by the movies, I was out taking a look and I saw that there was this B movie. And the B movie had some text that was distorted in perspective and I wanted to cover it here. So let's go ahead and actually start. I'm going to start with an Arial Black regular. It's 131 pixels and the only reason that it's that is because if you take a look at the image size, it's a 6 by 4 at 150 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I'm just going to type in all caps the word movie. And I'm going to hit command enter or control return or control enter. Notice that it is white. So it's Arial Black white text. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'll bring my palette in. Just use, let's say, a yellowy color. And now I can switch over to the move tool, bring this over to the center. Now, for this, I'm going to switch back to the text tool, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select from this color, I'm going to select this orange that I have here. Now, what I tell people is usually wind up experimenting with the layer styles. They wind up giving you a lot of really cool effects, and you can delete them. So, I mean, play around. You, you can get some really cool stuff. Now, I have the layers style palette open here. And I have the text layer movie. I'm going to double click on that. Notice the layer style window open up. I'm going to move this over here so that I can kind of see a little bit here. First thing that I'm going to want to do automatically, do a little bevel and emboss action. Now, once I wind up setting that up, one of the things that I don't like about this is in the poster, they had some kind of white areas up here at the top, but they didn't have any black stuff. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity down to zero. And now what I'll do is I'll increase the size of the bevel. And notice I can still come over here and do a command spacebar, control spacebar, and zoom in to kind of see this. I can move this out of the way and kind of get myself into a spot where I can kind of play with the softening. Notice that it softens the bevel here. I can increase the size. And you can also change where the light is facing it. So notice it's almost as if here there's a sun and it's shining down onto the object. So it's the sun's right here, shining. So this is the bright area. This is a dark area. So I know that I wanted the shiny part to be over in this one section. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it over to this side. And notice that I can drag it closer, it makes it more intense. So play around with it. Hey, worst thing that can happen is you can just uncheck it and do it all over again. So I'm going to increase my size a little bit. I'll go ahead and soften it up a little bit. I'm going to drag it over here to this one corner and then I'm going to drag it inward. Once you wind up getting it exactly where you want it, and I'm not going to really futz around with it because that's not the point of the tutorial, I'm going to hold on the option key and I'm going to use my scroll to scroll down. I'm a big fan of using that. Now here, this is where the change happens. I'm going to go ahead and grab my move and I'm movie and I'm going to put it in the center. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to tip this inwards. And there's two ways for me to be able to do it. If I were to select the type tool with that type layer selected, I can go ahead and use my warp. I can click on warp and under warp, I can go ahead and click on arc. Notice that it bows the entire text and I can take the bend and put it back to zero. Having that arc, then I can work with the horizontal distortion and the vertical distortion. Notice if I grab this and I drag it to the left, it's almost as if it's tipping the left side forward. And I'm just going to drag to the right, drag to the right so that I can kind of show you. So notice dragging to the right is almost as if it's tipping the right side towards you. Under the vertical distortion, Dragging it to the left, tips it towards, tips the top towards me, the bottom tips the top away from me. So that's one way to do it. The other way that you can do it is click on edit and transform. Ah, but take a look. Distort and perspective are not available to you there. So how do we wind up getting around this? And it's a little tricky because you can't get around it this way. Uh, let's see, you can't get around it by curve converting a smart object. If I go to edit, transform still no distort no perspective so how can we wind up changing this one of the ways for you to do it is just have it highlighted and let's say we do a right click 
or command, an actual, I mean, I'm sorry, an actual control click for the Macs. And what we can do is we can create a work path or a shape. I'm going to go ahead and create a shape. Now I have a shape that happens to look like the word movie with a fill. Once I have that set, I can go to transform path and I can select perspective. Now notice if I put my cursor over this corner and I click and drag downward, it tips it away. If I click and drag upwards, it tips it towards me. So a little bit more control. Once I have that all set, I can go ahead and do a enter key on your keypad or a command enter. And now I can do another transform. Let's say that I want to do a free transform. I can grab it and drag it from the side, bring it inwards. Once that's all set, now I have perspective. So it's a great way to be able to kind of round up how to be able to do perspective with two different methods, either using a warp or using perspective by transforming your text into an actual shape.